Hi and welcome. I want to apologize that I haven't had a new episode out in a while. My life continues to be a series of challenges and struggles and uh, unfortunately it's caused me to put the show on a back burner. I haven't been able to get to any events or put put together any footage. I'm not sure how much longer I'll be able to do the show honestly, but I will do it as long as I can. Uh, Sometimes I just wish my life wasn't as difficult as it is. But then it wouldn't be as interesting, would it? The Loft Cinema's 2011 Film Festival ended with a showing of the movie House of Boys, which was a very enjoyable movie showcasing the life inside a house of go-go dancers. And it starred a great character actor named Udo Kier, who has worked with greats such as Andy Warhol. Uh, they decided to give Udo Kier a Lifetime Achievement Award, and he was kind enough to show up and accept the award. And we were lucky enough to run into him in the parking lot, where he gave us a little shout out. I wanted to show you a clip from the movie and show you Udo Kier in some of his more relaxed moments. Enjoy. Working here ten months? Almost eleven. So you should know the rules of the house like the back of your hand. Get it on and get it off. Is there something wrong with my stage routine? Your off stage routine is a little off. I mean for a straight boy. You didn't let me be with girls. Now that ain't an issue, you still have a problem. I just worry that your little evil eye might be lightening your load. Has anyone complained? No, not yet. But I know how this goes. Believe me, Jake. I'm teaching him the basics. Why don't you start teaching him right now? What do you mean? I have a request for Frank. So you might open a new chapter in your teaching program and introduce him to the art of your well-appreciated private shows. Don't you have to ask Frank first? Your rules. I make the arrangement, and I leave it up to you. Who wants him? Who wouldn't? But this one is borrowing from your candy jar, your favorite. I guess you should make arrangements for the both of us. Why would I give up my best tipper? You're such a professional. Snow White will have the time of his life. Hmm. A Jake who doesn't mind sharing. Something wrong? You sick? Just happy, sir. Don't you sir me? Okay, ma'am. I was left a little dismayed by the panel that was put together for the film Cruel and Unusual. Uh, There were no trans women there. Uh, There were no women of color there. Uh, The people they did have, although they all meant well, uh, really didn't have a lot to say on the subject of any import. Uh, but it's a discussion we need to have, and I'm glad that at least somewhere we're having that discussion. 
T.C. Tolbert's a great activist for the trans community. Um, and the other two panelists, one uh, who is with a group called Books Behind, uh, Read Between the Lines, which gives books to prisoners. It's a great um, effort. It really didn't have a lot to do with the subject at hand. And the other person was somebody who was with a group that wants to dismantle the entire prison industrial complex. And although that, again, is a great uh, effort, it really didn't have a lot to do with the subject. Yolanda is a 21-year-old transgender male to female. She's been taking hormones since she's about 12 or 13 years old. She dropped out of school when she was in the sixth grade. She has uh, does not know her father. Her mother is a recovering drug addict. She is a rather remarkable person considering the difficult life that she has had. I was prostituting from the age 10 until 19. I needed food, I needed clothes, and I had to do this. It's like I didn't know any other way of working. I tried to go to school, I tried to do every other way except for that, but it just turned for me. Transgender people are disproportionately incarcerated. What, that, what I mean when I say that is that more, tra more transgender people are incarcerated, given the entire transgender population, than makes sense, or than would be in the rest of the population. And the question is, why? The downside of protective custody is that, you know, you're locked down in, in, in a room for 23 and a half hours a day. It's a type of punishment on top of a punishment, just because you're transsexual. Oh God, okay, the county. I sat there for almost a year in 24 hour lockdown. It's just like a room, just a room. You don't have anything in there but your bed, your window that you can't even open, so you don't even get air, you feel like an animal, then the room that's in, like, it's a big window so everyone can see you. It was uh, entertaining for them to see this person in this room going crazy. You know, no one, everyone was laughing, everyone was walking by, ha, 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 look at the homo. It really feels like you're in a mental hospital, it really does. Department of Corrections wanted to keep me segregated. They were saying to keep me safe. Some people were saying that I want to be with her. Then the other people say that I want to be with her. And then when the administration got wind of it, then they would come and get me. And they felt that to remove me from the population, then things would be normal. That's when the cutting actually first started as far as on my arms. Segregation can be very hard, especially when you're there for something you have not done. <laughs> How are you? It feels good to see you. <laughs> What's going on? You look 
Does it hurt? No, it barely even bleeds. Like that pile is how many? Uh, this is 20 cc's, but I do this once a week. And then I take the hormone pills once a day. I call it my birth control pill. Like, how far along were you before you were arrested? I had done five years of hormones. Because I know the pictures you looked very, very different. Yes. Than you do now. Mm hmm. So that's a lot of time lost. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Happy birthday to you. Make a wish, sweetie, and blow them out. My birthday. Mm -hmm. It gets to be just like another day. I've had so many of them where I wasn't around family or I always got a present from my son, but I don't even think that's going to happen this year. Well, let me put this in the bedroom. Excuse me. They were attached at the hip. I just can't imagine that Jake would not want to see Anna. Jake knew Anna as Anna since he was eight years old and didn't have a problem with that. The rest of our family hasn't even had contact with him. And we couldn't get a number or an address to send him anything for his birthday, nothing for Christmas, and that's not right. And now that he's 18, they won't give him the information where Anna is. Jake should make his own decision now. So I'm coming into this discussion from a place of activism in the prison system and in the immigration issues in the borderlands. And I have to say that I'm also coming from a place of naivete when it comes to the challenges that transgender men and women face in prison and in daily life. Um, so in many respects, I'm as much a learner about this as many of you might be. Um, my experiences have given me a perspective that emphasizes the common humanity of people, no matter what side of what line you're on, be that the border, bars, or gender, um, we all come from different parts of that. And for me, that's being an ally. And I hope that this perspective can be useful in our discussion. Um, so Cruel and Unusual for me highlighted many of the problems with the current criminal justice system from solitary confinement and lockdown, to medical care and the use of taxpayer money, from the focus on retributive justice, to the discrimination based on gender, identity, race, and class. Um, we find ourselves presented with intriguing questions about the intersections of sex and gender, the criminal justice system, the treatment of prisoners, and the dehumanization of others in our society. And I know I just said a lot, um, and that can all seem really overwhelming in a lot of ways. Um, so where do we start in helping to, depending on who you are, change, heal, fix, or overthrow the system? Um, there are some great organizations in this country focused on just these questions. But what I've come to realize is that we just, if we just focus on changing the system and forget the everyday life, the needs of those people incarcerated in these prisons, then we are missing something as well. Um, and this is where Read Between the Bars and countless other books to prisoners programs nationwide. That Brilliant. But I, and so we were both skimming through it today and we were talking about this beforehand, but there's, I, I pulled a quote out of there and it said, the, the prison industrial complex cannot exist without gender violence. And so, well, I, I, the point of what you're trying to say is like, okay, so, but we're not getting rid of the prison industrial complex tomorrow, so what do we do in the interim, which is what we deal with constantly. And that's a really tough question. Um, I think um, I think people need to be protected. I think um, people who are violent probably need to be separated in some form. I don't think we should put them in an eight by 10 cell for 23 plus hours a day for an average of five years at a time. You know, we shouldn't do that. Uh, but we need to find mechanisms to protect people, but that's also not what it is for. That's not what prison is for. We say that prisons protect us and provide security both for the staff and people there and more importantly for our community, but that's not that's not what they do. 
And so I would also be very cautious to, to say, well, this is a job that the prison needs to do um, because that's not, it's not, never going to be the job of the prison, in my view. What did, you take away, what did you take away from this movie? Um, I think, I think the, the thing that struck me the most was when someone talked about that oftentimes when, when trans people get out of prison and don't have homes to go back to, they're not allowed to go into shelters. And so it's like we're closing off every avenue, every possibility for people. And that is really sad. The other thing that was most helpful to me was afterwards when um, everyone was laughing together and someone just asked the question that I always want to ask, which is, okay, this is the problem, what do we do about it? Yeah. You know, and that there's a sense that we're going to try to do something. So this suit that was brought, um, was filed in 2009, was by a woman who had been diagnosed with gender identity disorder by prison mental health officials. So this wasn't outside of the system, this was actually within the system. And they said, yeah, she absolutely needs hormone um, therapy and she needs surgery. And they were like, yeah, sorry, you're not gonna get that. And so um, so she filed a lawsuit and the, um, the result of that on September 30th is that they, um, they overturned the freeze policy. And so at the federal level, the new policy is that whatever treatment plan you are given according to the standards of care um, should continue, should be. That's at the federal level. That's not, um, you know, that's not jails, that's not um, county, county systems. So, but it's certainly a step. And I, I wanted to acknowledge that change because it's pretty big. I didn't even know this was an issue at all. Um, I mean, it makes perfect sense that it would be an issue, but it was just never something I'd even thought about before. Mm -hmm. So just being alerted to that this was even a thing was... Uh, it's comforting to know that there are other... Um, that there's a larger community around that is willing to educate on these issues. That someone who I consider myself even involved, and I did, had no idea this was an issue. So it's good to know that there's a, a larger group. Thank you. Of the screening room in downtown Tucson. This is going to be the location of the uh, first LGBT film festival held downtown. And uh, tonight is also a launch party, early launch party at Flux Studios. And they're going to have pre printed programs and uh, information on the films and uh, early release tickets. And we're going to go and see what the party's all about. See you later. Um, this is Joe Sprague, who is the uh, founding director of uh, the Out in the Desert Film Festival, which is happening uh, the middle of February this year. Joe, uh, let me know. You've always had a great love for movies, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what got you started uh, in the film festival business? Um, Fifteen years ago, when I started in Chicago, I was on the advisory board of the second oldest LGBT film festival in the country and I went from the advisory board to the board of directors to the operations manager there. Wonderful. Um, and this is one of the, I mean, we've tried other film festivals before. Um, what are you looking forward to with this, this new uh, incarnation of the uh, film festival, the Out in the Desert? Well, with Out in the Desert, we are on a juried show. All of our films are juried before they get into the festival. And then there's second jury for awards. There'll be audience juried for a second, but there's another type of award. So everything gets juried by a jury to get into the festival. Then it's juried for an award. And then it'll be juried by the audience for another award. So these, um, these films all have potential winning different awards right. from, from us. And, right. um, what are some of the films you really look forward to showing us this year? Um, well, Morgan is our opening night film, which is very, we're very excited about. We're going to be the third festival in the country to show that. Um, we're going to be showing House for Sale, which is a U.S. premiere. It's a Canadian film. This is the first time it's shown in the United States. It's actually, the, we're going to be the first film festival showing it. Wonderful. Um, so that's a trans film that we're very excited about bringing in. Um, we're bringing in a total 
total of 162 films over our six days. That's a lot of films. Yes. Now, are all these films being shown at the screening room? No. No. Some are going to be here at the loft, some are going to be at the screening room, and some of them are going to be at Grand Cinemas. Wow, you're getting Grand Cinemas to show up. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, now, there's more information on the website. On our correct? website. Great. Um, you can go to our website, you can go to our Facebook page um, and get information on both in both areas. Um, you can also, we have, we're having programs distributed around the city for sure. people to pick up so they get something in their hands to look at. Um, so those are places that they can get information. Uh, ticket prices, are they? Ticket prices are um, anywhere from $5, our highest is $10. Okay, um, and then you can get passes that discount discount your tickets down. Um, a full festival pass, which includes every single film, every all three of our parties, is a hundred dollars. Oh, okay, great, and that's all you, you can get all that information on your website. Yes, wonderful. Well, I appreciate you talking with me, and I look forward to all, this. Sounds like an amazing show. Yep, amazing festival. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. From out in the desert. The journey has just begun for Tucson's first annual International LGBT Film Festival. Get ready for a six-day adventure celebrating the best in LGBT cinema, February 17th through the 19th and February 24th through the 26th, featuring hundreds of LGBT films, dozens of filmmakers in attendance, and three premier festival parties. You don't want to miss it. Out in the Desert 2012. Be there. Visit our website for full festival schedule and details. Get in, Batch, we're going shopping. So, like, you've never been with a girl? Oh, it's a Super Bowl party? I don't know, he's gay. We are so gonna get drunk and made out. Oh, so there's this gay guy that works at the salon that I go to. He's, like, 53, salt and pepper hair. I know this guy, right? He's gay, too. You should totally meet him. You guys would be perfect together. <laughs> oh, Batch! You're stupid, Batch. 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 Hey, Batch! Sorry, Batch. Do you like love Lady Gaga's new album? So am I like your fat hag? I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. Hag doesn't mean ugly though, right? It's just like a phrase. What do you mean you're not coming? That's so gay. Um, no offense. I mean stupid gay, not gay gay. You're like practically a girl. You're like practically a girl. I love that you're like practically a girl. I think he's gay. Do you think he's gay? Do you think he's gay? I think he's gay. No offense, but are you gay? Oh my god, he's totally gay. You should go talk to him. Yeah, I know. I'm with my gay boyfriend. Oh, he's not my boyfriend. He's gay. This is my gay boyfriend. It's a creep from upstairs. Pretend to be my boyfriend. If you're like my sassy gay friend, I love it. I have always wanted a gay best friend. Help me pick out something to wear. Oh my god, did you see the new sex in the city? SJP is so fierce. This is fierce, right? This shirt is fierce. So fierce. Does my butt look fierce in these jeans? That was so fierce. Love. Fierce. Do you love it? You're gay. You're supposed to know these things. Love it. Yeah, but you're not like a regular gay guy. Go get yourself a drink. Do you drink beer? I'll make you an apple martini. Ooh, there ain't no other way. Oh, actually, look at this. Do you think my right boob is bigger than the left one? That's like way bigger. Babe, I told you he's gay. He's probably more attracted to you than he is to me. I really need a girl's night. Do you think I can pull off not wearing a bra on the shirt? I don't know. He's like really mad at me. Do my boobs look bigger? Why can't I just date you? Feel them. The right one's bigger, right? No, like, feel them. All the good guys are gay. All the good guys are gay. You are so gay. After I'm done with this, we'll do masks. Whatever. Marriage is overrated anyway. Oh my god, come look at wedding dresses. <laughs> Don't mind me, sir. I'm just casually doing the robot. Shut up, that Shut up. Bye, boyfriend. I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm a Christian, but you don't need to be in the pew every Sunday to know that there's something wrong in this country when gay people in the military, but our kids can't openly celebrate Christmas or pray in school. Don't be gay, Fark. Don't be gay. Yeah? Well, I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm a butt pirate.
But I don't need my cock in a hot, hairy ass every day to know that there's something wrong with this country when a leading presidential candidate can't understand the concept of a secular government, church-state separation, for the sake of preventing tyranny of the majority over the minority. It says liberty and justice for all, and all are created equal, not just white, rich, straight, Christian men. As president, I'll end Obama's war on religion. Obama has not made a war on religion. He is a constitutional scholar who, unlike you, understands the proper place of religion. Religion, however, specifically yours, has often waged war against cocksuckers like me. And your own words suggest you will too. And I'll fight against liberal attacks on our religious heritage. What you call liberal attacks are merely us saying we won't stand for your people beating up on our people anymore or these people or anybody else's people. You know, you can openly practice your religion everywhere, but there are a lot of places in this country where we cannot be openly gay. The military used to be one of them. Ha! We got it now. Faith made America strong. It can make her strong again. Diversity made this country strong. Remember all those servants and minorities that did all your work for you? Of course you do. You've honored them in your own special way, after all. I'm Rick Perry, and I approve this message. Yeah, well, I'm a proud liberal faggot American and one of the 99%, and I'm here to say, fuck you, Rick Perry. Your eyes to me are precious stones on a face that's made of solid gold when I hold you.